Hello everybody, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. Welcome to this episode of Bible Talk with Brother Luke. <clears throat> Today I'm going to uh, conclude this study uh, on the book of Acts. Um, I think I'll do it in two separate videos. First, <clears throat> right now I'm going to <clears throat> uh, teach on the uh, final chapter of the book, chapter 28. <clears throat> and once that is finished, I think I'll do a separate video uh, kind of a, a conclusion and summary uh, on the book of Acts. So for, for right now, let's just uh, pick up where I left off last time. Uh, Paul is uh, uh, under arrest. Uh, he's being sent to uh, Rome on a ship, uh, and he, there's a shipwreck. So let's look now at chapter 28 in the KJV. And when they were escaped, they knew that the island was called Melita, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. They showed us no little kindness. Uh, there's one thing that uh, maybe you've noticed it. Uh, I, I certainly have. Uh, in, in the KJV, uh, it's very common to find the use of double negatives. Now, in the English language, uh, what we would call proper English uh, is we're, we're taught to don't use a double negative uh, because uh, it the two negatives cancel each other out and, and it turns into the positive. It actually says uh, yes when you think it's saying no to something. Um, so, for example, in this first verse here, uh, no, in the second verse it says, And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. Uh, so you could, let's see how it's phrased in the Amplified here. And the natives showed us extraordinary kindness and hospitality. So the true meaning of that verse is they showed us extraordinary kindness and hospitality. But in the KJV it says, they showed us no little kindness. So it's it's just the, the use of the, the double negative in the KJV it can be very, very confusing. Now, I'm a KJV firstist. For 25 years, uh, I was a KJV onlyist. I not only um, personally believed in using only the KJV, uh, I... I uh, urged others to only use the KJV, and when uh, people uh, argued against uh, KJV onlyism, and, and uh, uh, I was an ardent defender of KJV onlyism. Uh, however, a few years ago, I, uh, I studied all the debates on the subject, and, and I changed my position, and I'm no longer a KJV only. However, that's a different subject. I don't want to get too sidetracked. But my, my position on it now is that uh, I'm the KJV firstist. I want to read it first in the KJV. I rely on the KJV as scripture, uh, but uh, I will not only look at the KJV. I will look at other translations. I will look at commentaries. I will listen to your opinion on, on how the, the verse should be understood. Uh, but I do st still... All other translations, I test them against the KJV, and, and the KJV is my final authority. However, I don't want to say that you're forbidden uh, to look at other translations. You're forbidden to look at anything else that might be helpful. The translation that I like to use as a secondary source is the Amplified, because the Amplified is written in modern English that's easy to understand, but it's also... Um, amplifying the scriptures or expanding it you, we could say it's I, I could really uh, describe the amplified as a translation slash commentary the translators of the amplified are including their own comments and thoughts just just as I am amplifying it that's what I'm doing today I'm giving my commentary on each of these verses and explaining it in my own words and, and expounding on it. And the Amplified Translators, they've done the same thing and they've incorporated their thoughts 
in along with the uh, the scripture itself. So it's not a true translation, it's a translation and a commentary mixed together. But I find it sometimes to be very helpful. Uh, for example, in that verse, and the native showed us extraordinary kindness and hospitality. Who's going to be confused about that? But in the KJV it says, uh, and the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. Uh, okay, uh, enough on that. Let's... Uh, for they kindled a fire and received us, every one, because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. So uh, the people, uh, the native people there are, are being very kind and helpful to the shipwrecked people, Paul and his, uh, I think they said there are 276 people, if I remember correctly, in the last chapter, they were on their ship. Every one of them survived the shipwreck that Paul uh, prophesied. And so there, it's a large group of people that are on this island, and the native people are being very helpful to them. Um, so, but Paul is, uh, you know, as his custom is, he doesn't just want to be served; he wants to to work. And so he uh, he's out there gathering sticks for a fire, and within the sticks, there's a, unbeknownst to him, there's a snake. And he gets snake bitten. It says it and fastened on his hand. So it bit his hand. I guess it wouldn't let go. Um, and verse four. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hanging on his hand, they said among themselves, "No doubt this man is a murderer, whom thou has, who, though though he hath escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth not to live." Uh, and he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Uh, so this uh, this is the, such a poisonous snake that it is certain death, according to the what the uh, the native people are saying. There, he's this is a death sentence. He's going to die, and God or the gods, whatever the uh, kind of uh, theology these native people had there, uh, they thought that God was uh, killing him. And this was his punishment. He must be a guilty party. And that's why the snake has bitten him and he's going to die. Let's read these verses in the Amplified. After we were safe on land and we found out that the island was called Malta and the natives showed us extraordinary kindness and hospitality for they kindled a fire and welcomed us all since it had begun to rain and was cold but when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, a viper crawled out because of the heat and fastened itself on his hand. When the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they began saying to one another, Undoubtedly, this man is a murderer, and though he has been saved from the sea, justice, the avenging goddess, has uh, not permitted him to live. Then Paul simply shook the creature off into the fire and suffered no Ill, Ill effects. Uh, now there's a couple of footnotes here. Let me look what the footnotes say here. Uh, uh, ver, ver, uh, Acts 28.3, the footnote is probably a sand viper. Vipera amodites, dites, amodites whose venom is deadly and fast-acting. All right, let's go back to the KJV and look at uh, uh, verse 6. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly, but after they had looked a great while and so no, saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. <laughs> so they, they first, uh, they were certain that he must be a murderer and this is God's uh, judgment against him and he was going to suddenly die. And now they were saying that since he didn't die and it was uh, certain, when you get bit by that kind of snake, you die suddenly. 
Uh, and since that didn't happen, he must be a god. Verse 7, in the same quarters <clears throat> were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius, who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick <clears throat> of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laded us <clears throat> with such things as were necessary. And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. Well, I didn't notice this before, but uh, it's interesting how uh, they declared Paul to be a god because him surviving this snake bite that should have caused certain death. And then and, and they declared him to be a god. I guess Paul was aware of that. Uh, now, there's many examples of men who are uh, prophets in the Bible, uh, apostles, and, uh, and sometimes angels who come down uh, on a mission from, from God. And, and uh, sometimes these men or angels, people perceive them as God or a God. And in every case, they are quick to correct the people and say, don't worship me, I'm just a man. Or don't worship me, I'm an angel, I'm not God. Only God is worthy of your worship, so don't worship me. Um, the exception to that, of course, is Jesus. He, he is uh, always worshipped by his uh, his followers, his, th those who believe in him, they, they believe he is our Savior God. He's not merely a man, not an angel, but God himself in the flesh. And he is worshipped and he accepts his worship and never rebukes the people and corrects them and say, don't worship me. I'm not worthy of worship. Only God is worthy of worship. So in the case of Jesus, uh, the fact that he does not correct people is another reason for us to consider that he uh, does claim deity. Uh, but here we have Paul uh, being uh, identified as a god by the native people, and there's no record here of Paul correcting them. Now, I'm not saying Paul does not correct them. I suspect he probably does correct them. I'm sure Paul would not accept worship. But I find it interesting in the text that we, we don't have a record of, uh, of the people being corrected. And I'm sure that after Paul surviving the snake bite and be declared, being declared a god, and then not only healing one person, but all the people that are brought to him, he's healing them, I'm sure that even more of the people would think of him as a god. But we see no record of him uh, denouncing that. If you've got any thoughts on that, let me know your opinion on that. Um, so now we're on uh, uh, verse 11. And after three months, we departed in a ship of Alexandria. <laughs> so these people all get back on another ship. The fact that they they endured this long, horrible storm and, and survived the shipwreck and it didn't stop them from getting back on another ship, and um, uh, which uh, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor and Pollux. Let me read verse eleven in the Amplified. At the end of three months, we set sail on a ship which had wintered at the island, an Alexandrian ship with the twin brothers Castor and Pollux as its figurehead. Uh, let's look at this. There's a footnote. The, uh, 
sons of Zeus in Greek mythology. Okay, so Castor and Pollux in Greek mythology are sons of Zeus. Um, verse 12, and landing at Syracuse, we... I find it really interesting that a lot of the names of cities uh, uh, in the Bible uh, here in America, we have cities with those names. Uh, it's also true that uh, in Europe, many of the cities in Europe, uh, particularly in, in England, a lot of the cities there, uh, like York in England, well, we have New York here. Uh, and, and there's many, many examples like that. But so, did you know that Syracuse, New York is not the original. There's a Syracuse here in the Bible. Um, and landing at Syracuse, we tarried there three days. And from thence, we fetched a compass and came to Rhegium. And after one day, the south wind blew, and we came to the next day to Putili, T Putioli. That's P U T E O L I. Let's see how it's spelled in the Amplified, verse 13. Putioli, there's another footnote. I located about 150 miles from Rome in the Bay of Naples near Pompeii. This was Rome's main seaport. Okay. Uh, verse 14, where we found brethren. Now, when the... We see the word brethren. Uh, there's, some, there's a brother here on YouTube, a friend of mine, that has made a mistake. I hope he's, uh, he learns the error of this. But when you see the word brethren in the Bible, don't automatically assume that this is uh, the word brethren in that particular case is, is identifying them as Christians. The word brethren is used a lot of times in the Bible to identify a Jewish person. Who, and this person may or may not be a believer in Jesus. And so in Acts chapter 15 and verse 1, uh, this brother I'm referencing here, he mistakenly thinks that, that these people are uh, saved. Uh, but uh, the, they... They may not be saved at all. They may not be believers in Jesus, particularly if they believe in Jesus and they think that you can't be saved unless you're circumcised, then I would say that they're not saved Christians because they never put their faith in Christ entirely. They put their faith in circumcision and uh, mosaic laws and all these other things, and they think you're saved by practicing the religion, and, and in addition to that, you've got to believe in Jesus. So... Here we have the use of the word brethren. Now, as we get the context, maybe we can discern whether these, this brethren means that they are Christians or not. Verse 14, Where we found brethren, and were desired to tarry with them seven days, and so we went to, toward Rome. I'm, I think that I, we can't say it with certainty, but I'm thinking in the context now that brethren here means that these were believers. And verse 15, And from thence, when the brethren heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Api, Forum, and the three taverns, whom, when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard, but Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. Now when it says suffered, that means permitted. Suffer means uh, you're permitted, or, or God. Uh, if God suffers for, for um, let's say there's a verse. Uh, 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 what is the verse? Uh, Do not think that uh, uh, God. Uh, hmm. I can't remember the exact verse now, but. But the word suffer often means patience. Let me look at that in the Amplified here. Verse 16. When we entered Rome, Paul was allowed to stay. So allowed, that means allowed or permitted or... Uh, 
So it doesn't mean that he was suffering in pain or in, you know, in chains or anything in that respect. Paul was allowed to stay by himself in rented quarters with the soldier who was guarding him. Paul certainly has suffered a lot in his ministry. I'll cover more of that later but uh, in my summary. But uh, in this case, this word suffer just means that he was allowed. Uh, verse 17, And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. <laughs> there he goes. Want to talk to the Jews again. He's always um, uh, continuing to witness to the Jews, his brethren, the Jews. Brethren, in this sense, means that he's a fellow Jew. Uh, he's never given up on the Jews. He, his, his custom, the scriptures tell us, customarily, it was his uh, routinely go into a city and go to the synagogue, first telling all the Jews about Jesus, that he's the Messiah that was promised. Uh, and... Uh, and a lot of times he gets a lot of trouble. They, some of the Jews believe and get saved. Some of the Jews uh, just, uh, you know, reject his message. Some of the Jews reject his message and uh, turn against him so much that they want to kill him. In fact, they did stone him and leave him for dead a few chapters back. So uh, it says, And it came to pass that after three days Paul called the chief of the Jews together, and when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren. See, he's referring to them as brethren, and these are just Jews. They're not saved uh, they're Christians. Though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, who, when they had examined me, would have let me go, because there was no cause of death it be. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar, not that I had ought to accuse my nation of. For this cause, therefore, have I called for you, to see you, and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. And they said unto him, We neither received letters out of Judea concerning thee, neither any of the brethren that came showed or, or spake any harm of thee. <clears throat> so these Jews here, they don't have uh, a lot of information about Paul, which is kind of surprising to me. Paul should be very, very well known across the, the known world there uh, for all of his uh, preaching. Uh, first, as a persecutor of the church, and then an apostle, a converted believer and an apostle, and then one that is notorious for going, in, as I said earlier, going to all the synagogues, wherever he, every city goes to, and preaching that the Messiah has come, and it's Jesus, whom you killed and has risen from the dead. Uh, verse 22, But we desire to hear of thee what thou thinkest, for as concerning the sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. <clears throat> so they've, they, they've heard about Christianity, but they're not really familiar with Paul as, a, as, as an apostle <clears throat> in his history. Verse 23, And when they had appointed him a day, there came many to him into his lodging, to whom he expounded and testified the kingdom of God, persuading them concerning Jesus, both out of the law of Moses and out of the prophets. So uh, the first five books, maybe six, uh, the first five books, I think, of the Bible called the Law, uh, and then the remaining books of the Old Testament are called the Prophets. So when we hear the term, the, Jesus used the term the Law and the Prophets, this just means the Scriptures, uh, all the Scriptures before the New Testament. Um, out of the, both the law of Moses and out of the prophets from morning till evening. So Paul is going through the scriptures and he's using the scriptures to, to show them all of these prophecies in the scriptures about the coming Messiah. Jesus is fulfilled them all. And he is, this, this should prove to you that he is the promised Messiah. Verse 24, and some believed the things which were spoken and some believe not. That's always the case. And when they agreed not among themselves, they departed, 
at least no one here is so angry they want to kill him yet that I... Uh, after that, Paul had spoken one word, uh, well spake the Holy Ghost by Isaiah, the prophet unto our fathers, saying, Go unto his this people and say, Hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand, and seeing ye shall see and not perceive. For the heart of this people is waxed gross. So he's quoting Isaiah the prophet, um, uh, you know, that, and Jesus quoted Isaiah too in his ministry that, hey, uh, even back in Isaiah said that when the Messiah comes, some of you are just going to not believe. And their ears are dulled of hearing and their eyes have, have they closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Healed him in this case, I believe, is talking about salvation, salvific he healing, where uh, before we're saved, we're in a condemned state, uh, where uh, we're uh, guilty and just waiting for uh, death and judgment and condemnation in the in the second death in the lake of fire. That's the state we need to be healed from that and be reborn um, because of our faith in. Jesus as our Messiah, Savior, and our faith that Jesus died for our sins, and that uh, our uh, we are redeemed uh, because of because of Jesus, not because of any Judaism, not because of any religious thing we've done, not because of any good works in life, but because of our faith in Jesus, we are healed spiritually and uh, saved. Verse twenty-eight. Be it known therefore unto you that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear hear it. And when they had said, and when he had said these words, the Jews departed and had great reasoning among themselves. So they continued discussing this. And Paul dwelt two whole years in his own hired house and received all that came in unto him, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. So he's under house arrest for two years, uh, uh, and uh, but he's, he's free to receive people and preach. So two more years of him preaching the gospel. So that concludes the book of Acts, 28 chapters. Uh, I want to urge you to uh, if you just came across this single video, uh, I hope that now you have enough interest that you will go and watch the entire series, the uh, the whole book of Acts, all 28 chapters. Uh, all of those videos are uploaded and available on my YouTube channel, Sin City Preacher. It's under the playlist title, uh, The Book of Acts, uh, a verse-by-verse -verse commentary. So, uh, thank you for watching. And uh, I'm going to do another video. After I finish this, I'll immediately start a, another video that will serve as a summary and conclusion to this, this study. Uh, thank you for watching, and bless you all in the name of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.